You guys really liked my last video discussing the Music Freak, so I decided to do it again. This time it's about a topic that I've honestly been wanting to talk about for a while because it honestly pisses me off. And that's just how much the, the Music Freaks fandom has vilified the music club, especially Haley in episodes 9 and onward. So I decided that once and for all, I'm gonna lay it all down and get it all out there. Sorry if this video is a bit jumbled, I was originally going to make this a rant video, but I decided to go against that because I didn't want to feel like I was attacking anyone specifically, so I decided to restructure the video completely. And because those in defense of videos are decently popular, I decided why not? So yeah, I'm going to defend Haley and the rest of the music club and explain why they are NOT wrong in this situation and why they have every single right to feel the way that they feel. And I will be discussing all the arguments against them that I've heard too, so listen to everything before you go down with your pitchforks in the comments, Drew Stans. But anyway, let's just get into this, shall we? For those of you who haven't seen The Music Freaks, what the fudge are you doing? Go watch it! <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. But if you want to hear what it's about first, it's about a guy in high school named Jake who joins his school music club despite being one of their bullies in the past, especially Haley and Xander. From what it seems, Luke seems to be at least aware of Jake's past treatment of them, and Millie and Sean seem to have no idea. Makes sense, since both of them are in different grades than them, with Millie being in the grade below and Sean being in the grade above. Regardless of being their former Billy, Jake mostly did it because he was previously a victim of the same treatment when he was younger, and once he realized his new friends, who stood up for him and brought them into their own, have similar viewpoints, he tried his best to go along with them so that he wouldn't be alone and bullied relentlessly again. Begrudgingly, Haley lets him join the club after he auditions for a singing role and reveals he's actually an amazing singer. The next few episodes, Jake tries to enjoy his true passion with his newfound friend group while also trying to keep his old friends from getting suspicious and from turning on him for being another freak. A lot happens along the way, and I won't get into too much of the in-betweens because it really is worth the watch seeing how these characters develop, all with this amazing soundtrack that Rosie Closey compiled, and beautiful animation that only the greatest and most passionate gacha tubers can create. Seriously, this level of gacha animation is phenomenal and inspiring to anyone who wants to use gacha as an animation medium. But back on topic, all this unfortunately comes to a head in episode 9, when Jake is hanging out with his popular kid friends, aka the Jomies, as everyone refers to this friend group, they all put these horrible thoughts about the music club into Jake's head, and eventually they briefly manipulate him into thinking and saying all these horrible things about his new friends. But unbeknownst to Jake, Zoe recorded him saying everything, and Leah sent the audio to Haley. Hearing this destroys the music club, and they lash out at Jake and cut ties with him. While Jake is obviously a victim in this situation, so many people make out the music club, and especially Haley, out to be the bad guys in this scenario. I've seen people say so many things about the music club, saying that they should have done this or they should have done that. Saying things that almost seem like the Jomies have these people convinced of their narrative that Haley was only using him and she didn't really care about him as a friend. Heck, I've even seen people say that Haley and the music club are more toxic than Drew and the other Jomies. And for what? Not trusting Jake after years of bullying them? For not wanting to be around their bullies? Some of these arguments are insane, and I'll be breaking down some of the ones I've heard. Side note, this next segment is not directed towards anyone in the Music Freak fandom in particular. Rather, this is a wide range of people within the fandom that I've seen vilify Haley and the Music Club. Just wanted to clear that up because I've gotten into some messes of making particular people in the past feel attacked for their viewpoints, and I want to clarify that this is not an attack on anyone particularly, just a problem that I have with the fandom overall. With all that out of the way, here are just some of the arguments that I've heard since the events of Episode 9 and even before that. The Music Club should have let Jake explain, and the Music Club should have known that Jake was good because of everything he did for them. I'm pairing these two together because my response for both of them is pretty much the same. Yes, Jake has done things that are nice and has been a friend of the Music Club for a while, a month as Leah confirms. Compare this to years of bullying at least two of the members. If someone you know is mean to you for a longer time than they are nice to you, logically, you'd probably assume that they're more likely to be mean than nice. Or as YouTuber Den of the Drake once said, Well, let me put it this way. If a stray dog shows up at my house and sh 
on my lawn every day for 13 years, and I wake up one morning and see the exact same dog out the window, I'm not going to assume it's here to fetch me my newspaper. I'm going to assume it's here to shit on my lawn. And the nice things that Jake has done aren't really valid anymore. Lots of people paint the music club as being upset with Jake for talking behind their backs, but it's not just that simple. It's also about what Jake saying these things means. To them, it means that their whole friendship with him was a lie. They can't look at the good things Jake has done for them because to them, it was all a lie. To them, it was all just an elaborate scheme of Jake to toy with their emotions and use them and humiliate them. They can't trust anything Jake says to explain himself because they don't know if they can trust anything he says or does, period. Haley was also pressuring Jake to choose sides. She's just as bad. And what are the sides that Jake has to choose from? A friend group who accepts him for his authentic self and supports his real passion instead of putting him down for it? Or a friend group who's constantly putting down other people for something as simple as a hobby or interest and one that collectively manipulated him and isolated him from one of his support systems so that they can have them all for themselves? Yeah, I know which side I'm choosing. I'm sorry. I refuse to believe that wanting someone to get out of a toxic and abusive situation makes you just as bad as the abuser. Haley called the Jomies toxic. She's so rude and unsupportive. Uh, of her bullies? Yeah, what else were you expecting from her? What's next? Are you going to get mad at her for saying the sky is blue or the grass is green? Because like it or not, Drew and the other Jomies are toxic. No matter how much you try to twist the narrative to make them look like the better friend group. Drew saw that Jake was bullied and helped him. Why didn't Haley? Because in the flashback scene, the bullying was obvious and directly in front of Drew. Also, Haley did help Jake at first. She offered him safe space in the music club when Jake first opened up about how he was being treated. And again, now she can't know if he was telling the truth or just manipulating her because, again, after she heard that audio, to them, their friendship with Jake was nothing but a lie. The music club makes tons of mistakes, and they get mad at Jake for making just one. It's not just one mistake! <sighs> so after years of being bullied by this guy, to then let him into your safe space and form an emotional connection with him, and to then find out that it all might have been a complete lie? People who were ruthlessly bullied and treated like outsiders and freaks for years to have their trust supposedly toyed with? These people are the bad guys? The people who are toxic friends? Are you kidding me right now? And not the people who literally bullied others and put them down for their interests? Have their friend feel like they need to walk on eggshells around them? psychologically manipulate him, isolate him from his other support systems, all because they think a passion people have is stupid? Another thing that drives me up the wall with this fandom is the way that they put Drew on this pedestal. To them, Drew is a sexy, closeted, gay, Sunday woo-woo boy who can do no wrong. And even when he is in the wrong, they twist the narrative and blame anyone but him including literal victims of verbal and mental abuse. You really think Zoe gives two shits about who Jake spends his time with so much to the point that she holds a gun to Drew's head and tells him to treat Jake this certain way? And don't even try to justify anything he does because Drew just misses his friend. Yeah, I bet an old friend who clinged on to me and tried engaging in almost everything I did online, giving me almost no space to do my own thing, misses me too. Yeah, I'm sure I just need to spend more time with him. Then he'll stop trying to reach out to me through every social media platform he knows that I have and stop trying to convince other people to get me to talk through him through sob stories how I don't want to be friends anymore. And he's so sorry. Yeah, those were actually things that happened to me, by the way. 
And that's why the argument of, it's just a show or story, why are you taking it so seriously, is something that also gets on my nerves. These shows and stories depict incidents that actually happen in real life, and people's reaction to these plot points kind of says something about their morals more than some might realize. If this is how these people talk about a fictional character's awful actions, how would they feel about someone in real life doing this? If someone in real life used the excuse, but they miss them and don't want to lose them, about an abuser when their victim tries to get away from them, just see what reaction you'll get. So to anyone saying that I take these fictional scenarios too seriously, it's because a lot of these scenarios depict things that happen in real life. Now, of course, you can have your own opinions and interpretations of these stories and characters. I just hope that these people recognize that some of these actions are harmful and shouldn't be glorified. It's not cute for Drew to want Jake for himself. It's possessive. Even if Drew does miss Jake, this doesn't excuse his actions. And I won't deny that there is also room for Drew and the Jomies to learn from their mistakes. Leah is already doing just that. But so far, we never even see Drew even attempt to learn from his mistakes or become better as a person. He still can have that happen in episode 11, yes. But as it stands, he's nothing but a toxic friend and a borderline abuser. And people need to stop trying to excuse his actions or shift the blame off of him, especially onto other characters who don't deserve it. <sighs> and there you have it. That's why I don't blame the music club for this incident in the slightest and why I will defend them until the day I die. Again, I apologize if I sound like I did come off as harsh in this video. Like I said at the start, this is not an attack to anyone in particular. This was just a rant about things in the fandom as a whole that have been bugging me for a long time. Of course, I do understand that people have different perceptions of characters and stories, and if you disagree on anything in particular in this video, then I completely respect your opinion, even if I do wonder why. Which you can feel free to tell me why in the comments. I may not completely understand it, but I am willing to respect it. And that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching again, everyone. And thanks for being so patient with me as my roller coaster of motivation guarantees that I cannot predict my upload schedule. Currently, I'm more focused on my AU channel than this channel, which you can sub to me at Hacky's Haven if you're interested in what's over there. I also post on my community tab frequently with updates. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys around. Bye!